Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today I'm riding with Abby and we're gonna be showing her and showing you some tips and some exercises to help you get better at snowboarding across flats. Now, the reason a lot of snowboarders struggle with getting across the flat pistes is, it, is because it requires a completely different turn shape to what you would normally be doing across the rest of the mountain. So normally when we're snowboarding, we make what's called closed turns that look a bit like this. And the reason we make these sort of turns is that after each turn, whether it's heel side or toe edge, we get the board 90 degrees across the slope to slow ourselves back down and get a bit more control. Now, if you're to do this type of turn on the flats, not only are you gonna just run out of speed, get stuck and end up skating across them, but you might have found yourself, it's actually quite dangerous. When you turn that board 90 degrees, when you're on a flat slope, it's very easy to catch an edge. So I'm gonna show you that it's better when we're riding flats to change our turn from this shape to what we call an open turn. We basically really stretch out the turn so the board's almost running in a straight line, but we're still rolling from one edge to another. And the technique required for this is actually very similar to what we do when we're carving. So we're gonna start off with some simple carving exercises. <laughs> We're here on a nice wide mellow green slope, perfect for practicing some carving. So what we're gonna start doing is actually have the board going in a straight line on a flat base to begin with. Now, starting on a flat base, it's quite important to understand this position because it's this neutral position that we're always in, in between every turn. Every time you go from your toe edge to your heel edge, your heel edge back to your toe edge, even if it's only for a fraction of a, sec a second, at some point you're in this flat base position. So it's important we understand it and know what it feels like. Now, a lot of people also think that this is the best position to ride across the flats in, that you just wanna be completely on a flat base. Now, whilst it can work sometimes, if the piece is completely level, if it's not, you're completely at the mercy of the fall line. And by that I mean, even if your slope looks pretty flat, if it's slightly cambered off in one direction or another, if you're not on an edge and your board's just on a flat base, you will end up going down whichever way the slope wants you to. So if you've ever been riding flats and you found like your board has a bit of a life of its own, it's probably because you're on a flat base and that board just feels quite skittish under your feet. But anyway, back to the exercise. As I said, we're gonna start in this flat base position. So this is this neutral position. My shoulders are dead in line with the board. I've just got my head looking down where I wanna be going. And once you've done this for a couple of meters, you've got a little bit of speed. All I want you to do is start to bend your knees through your shins, press into the front of your boots, and you're gonna sink into that toe edge position that you already know. Now, I want you to resist any urge here to make any rotational movements to try and force the board to come around. But simply by getting your weight in the right place, the side cut of your board will engage in the snow and it's gonna grip and pull you round across the piece. So what we should see in the snow is a nice smooth arc. And if you've got your weight exactly in the right place, you should leave a really thin, pencil thin line in the snow. So I'll give you a quick demonstration. Give me a watch. Before you set off, make sure no one's coming down from above. You're not gonna crash into them. And we're gonna give this a few goes. We're starting on the toe side because we're on this side of the piste. We're gonna take a look back at our line, see what went right, see what went wrong. And we're gonna repeat the exercise a few times on the heel edge as well. Okay, make sense? All right, let's give it a go. Nice, we can see my line here on the heel edge. We've got Abby's line just there on the toe side. So we can see it's a bit fatter at the top, a little bit rushed at the first part of the turn, just kind of kicked that back foot around. But towards the end, we're starting to get a bit of an arc as the board grips in and begins to carve a little bit across the slope.
So we had a teeny bit of practice there doing the calf turns on the green slope just up that way. At the top of the lift, we just had a bit of a talk about posture and we're just practicing the posture more as we came down here. But now the end part of this slope is really, really mellow. So we're gonna go back to trying these calf turns, but rather than doing it one turn at a time and still closing off that turn, we're gonna go back to what I mentioned earlier about these open turns. So we're gonna start off the exercise exactly the same way. I'm gonna be flat based, coming down the side of the piece, a little bit of speed, I'm gonna just rock my weight forward onto my toe edge, feel the board grip, bring me round. But rather than getting the board to keep coming round right across the piece, I'm gonna stand back up into my neutral flat base position when the board's at about a 45 degree angle, and then I'm gonna rock back onto my heel edge. So I'm just gonna do these big, wide open S-shaped turns, carving down the piece. Now, we are still on a bit of slope, so if you do start to pick up too much speed, yeah, you can finish your turn off, slow it back down, and then get into it again. But essentially, we're trying to ride here the same way that we would ride a flat slope, just rocking from one edge to the other. Make sense? Yeah. Cool, so give me a watch, and then as always, jump in, give it a go. Uh, you just follow me down for this. So we've done a few carving exercises there to help hold that edge in the snow, get that board to grip and get the board to actually bring you through the turn rather than rotating your body or developing any bad habits to try and get the board to turn. Now we've been practicing again just on the slightly steeper slope. We did one run on the really mellow slope where we got those open turns that I was talking about achieving. Now at the bottom of this run we've got a really long flat section so we're going to see Hopefully how that is now going to all come together and help you on the flat bits. Are you ready? Yep. Yep. All right, I'll follow you down. Yep. 